So starting out this video talking about the financial crisis, but if you want to stick around to the end, I also have something I've not done before, a little, I guess, inspirational thought at the end. So if you want to stick around for my inspirational thought, I don't know if it'll be enlightening to you or not, but it was my inspirational thought that I thought I could include today and then a little bonus thing on the end as well. So stick around for the whole video. I appreciate it. We appreciate it and God bless you. Today's video focus mainly on the cost of living and the cost of living crisis, which seems to be an ongoing thing really. <laughs> but that's kind of the topic today to think about and hopefully spur your comments too and to get what your thoughts are in the comment base about what you think about the cost of living and is it a crisis or is it a crisis where you live or is it a worldwide crisis what do you think is there a cost of living crisis i hear a lot of people talking about it and an upcoming cost of living crisis or just an upcoming crisis in general concerning money and and things of that nature i'm hearing a lot about it in fact just lately uh, my son was telling me about one of the uh, leaders uh, of one of the lands <laughs> i'm not going to be specific in saying who and my son was telling me he said that there's a, a major um, crash coming of course i've heard it from a lot of different sources maybe you have too this was a very influential person saying there's a a huge crash coming soon probably worse than you know the original crash way back you know when it happened and um, he said it might be very tough for a while and he was suggesting to invest in gold like so many other people do as well I'm not suggesting anything I'm just talking about you know the financial crisis so and what to do and and you know what do you do and how is it for you because this is a very interactive channel or several channels that we have we, we like to have them interactive and we like to hear what you have to say and comment and things of that nature now any nasty comments or kind of comments that are not so nice i've been just deleting lately so if you want to put some of those comments there if you want to go ahead that's okay i'll just delete them <laughs> because you know what why not be positive in any case, back to the topic, uh, crisis, you know, financial crisis, um, and how do you handle it? For example, uh, when I was home, it was it felt like it was getting unbearable for me back in North America. That's what I say when I was home because I'm now in the Philippines. And uh, one of the ways that I was looking into handling the financial crisis was to check out some places in the world where I could probably manage my money a little easier. And I think that's a key, is how you manage your money. You can probably manage your money wherever you are right now in the world to avoid this financial crisis. So how do you do it? <laughs> Put it in the comments. You can help me. You can help others. But one of the ways I looked into was indeed looking for some country just in general. Like, where can I make my money go further? Where can I manage my money that I could live, you know, without going, you know, crazy with this financial crisis? And I discovered the Philippines and I looked into what other people were saying basically as testimonials of how they were living here in the Philippines and found out that basically they were saying they were living... Uh, and in a much more manageable way with their money so taking my money from North America and trying to manage it a little easier over here doesn't mean I'm rich by any means because I am not but it does allow me to manage money a little easier over here and that was my number one reason first when seeking out like the Philippines where I am I found out I think I could anyway <laughs> manage my money a little easier over here that was my instigator for the Philippines and then of course I met Mahal which made the story even a little nicer or a lot nicer I shouldn't say a little nicer it made it made it so much nicer for me to to find such a beautiful Filipina and now we're just trying to manage things together so and the, and the thing to keep in mind is when you're managing things um, as you go forward in life there's always other unaccounted things that you're you're not considering that can kind of put you back in financial crisis again so, so even though I'm over here uh, 
Filipina was managing her money just fine and, and great. She was in no kind of debt. And I was back home and pretty much, uh, you know, okay. Like no, no major, major problems. Just trying to stay out of debt sort of thing. And But now that we're both together, <laughs> we have the financial crisis happening again because, you know, we had to um, buy certain things to try to make life happen. So we're managing the financial crisis together again now with certain amounts of debt that we have to take care of. Now my son doesn't like it so much over here. So and that's mainly because of like, you know, convenience and heat and things of that nature. Not a diss against the Philippines as such, it's just that he, he's, his in it, the ways that he likes things are back in North America. He likes the convenience factors of everything back in North America. And he likes that it's not the consistent heat that is over here consistent heat over here every day in the 30s and he finds that difficult so for those reasons we're kind of looking at going back to North America to that financial crisis which seems a lot harder once you're over here and adjusting to things over here which are much easier when you're used to North America and now going back the opposite way and rethinking how things are over there sometimes it feels like that's unbearable again but a lot of people going through financial crises of, or crises of their own and um, some finding it more manageable than others. And I just like to hear people's point of view in the comments. So that's kind of what this video is about. Dealing with the financial crisis. How do you do it? And how do you um, manage the crisis? Because people say we're really headed for a big crash. And like, is it the typical answer? Like, you know... Uh, Spend less than you make, have savings, make your investments. Or, you know, I had some thoughts as well. I was thinking, you know, you hear a lot about the word simple over here. Live a simple life. And the more I think about that, it makes so much sense. Like if you can have like a piece of cheap land, for example. I think that's a great way to start. Step one. And if you can somehow manage some farming on that cheap land. I think that's a good step too. Or maybe that's step three because you need to have a home on the land as well. So some sort of cheap home. And you hear a lot these days about, um, you know, tiny homes, things of that nature, which, so you get a piece of cheap land and get a, a tiny home, however that may be for you. Some people invest in like just making, building a structure of tiny land, a, a tiny home, I should say building a structure of tiny home on your piece of cheap land and then trying to farm on that land as much as you can and getting so much of the food on your own certainly these things will help in the financial crisis I think very basic very simple way of living simple life and then of course to make it even more simple have solar energy solar power keeping and sustaining your energy costs and just using minimal uh, energy cost in doing that as well these days almost certainly really you need internet I know we do for sure so you can run your router off your you know your solar energy and keeping keeping that part going as well in life and then as for water when I was home I always bought my water at Walmart anyway of course I used the water that was in the pipes <laughs> for showers and things but I never drank it because it never tasted good to me. It tasted a lot of chlorine, even though many, you know, they would basically say it's safe to drink, but I always tasted a heavy taste of chlorine. So I always bought my water. So if you got your simple land and like a piece of land that's cheap, and you got your tiny home of some way, however you made your tiny home, and then can do some farming on it to create some food for yourself. And then next, dig a well on your cheap land as well. And then if you need to bring in water, well, bring in water. But if you can get your own water by digging your well, how much better off are you? Just, of course, have to make sure it's safe to drink if you're drinking it. But in the meantime, you got your water for cleaning and you know, showering and washing things and, and so on and so forth. So, But that simple recipe is kind of my suggestion to deal with the crisis. So that's kind of what we're kind of looking into different things like we have a piece of land here in the Philippines so if we 
for any reason at any time stay in the Philippines. That's kind of a plan going forward. In the meantime, trying to get my son situated and seeing how life gets situated for all of us over in North America again, it's a similar idea again over there, trying to find a piece of land that's cheap, maybe a tiny home or two, then having water, so preferably a well, preferably solar energy. I'd like to be on a backup to the grid, you know, and have that as kind of a backup, but mainly solar if that's possible, and a cheap solar setup if that's possible. I don't know, because a lot of what I hear is pretty expensive with solar, but maybe there's a cheap solar setup that you, again, can tell me about in the comments. I'm always looking myself. So these are kind of my thoughts on handling and dealing with the um, financial crisis and of these times. So what are your thoughts? Drop in the comments and um, let me know what you think. So my devotional. <laughs> I thought I'd try it. You know, I was sitting here praying. Some people say talking to the Lord. And he put a thought in my heart or in my mind as I was just sitting here. And um, one thought was, you can destroy your life by just doing this one thing. Well, what is that one thing? It's like, destroy your life with one thing. And I was thinking, that scripture came to my mind. And it's, it's talking to people who love God, people who serve God. So Christians, you know, you love God. Because he says, he says with the scripture, he starts off, my people so when god says my people he's already talking to a certain audience right people who love god and i'm not going to mention churches and denominations because i don't believe god means it that way you can be whatever church whatever denomination but if you truly love god you're part of his people so anyway the, the scripture starts off my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge now you can look up to try to find where that is just by typing in those words. <laughs> so if you want to find out where it is, type in those words. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And the, the knowledge that he's referring to obviously is the Word of God, his knowledge, the Bible, because everything that's in there is from God, you know. It's, you know, for our, as another scripture says, admonition and learning. So uh, the scriptures. But if that's what he says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So if you don't want your life destroyed, you have to look at like the opposite or the converse. If you don't want your life destroyed in any way, it seems to suggest that you just need to read more of the scriptures, you know, and understand more of the scriptures. And uh, it's a very simple thought, but it's, it's a pretty deep thought. Of course, not my thought, God's thought. <laughs> He says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. So seek more of God, find out more of God's knowledge through the scriptures. That's finding more, of, finding out more about God, knowing more about God. And then your life will not be destroyed. That, that seems to be the opposite of what the scripture, you know, what the scripture is kind of inferring. It's what it's suggesting to us. We need to seek God, read more of the scripture, know more of the word and no more of God's knowledge, no more of God and, and God's ways and living for God and how to live according to the scriptures and your life will be saved and not lost and not destroyed. So something to think about with that scripture. <laughs> and thanks for tuning into today's video. God bless you. And every now and again, I thought it might feature this song. Uh, I did feature it all by itself on one of our videos. It's a song that my son wrote and I put our videos, you know, to the song, kind of like made a music video out of it. <laughs> but it's my, song, my son's song that he wrote about the Philippines. And uh, we've, we've had a lot of videos since I've been here over this past year. And I just put bits and pieces of our video with the song and kind of made a music video. So every now and again, I'll probably put it into one of our videos. Although you can go see the song all by itself on one of our videos as well on one of our channels. <laughs> so, but it, it's, it's a really nice song about the Philippines and I hope you enjoy it. Golden 
sun shines bright Swaying palms all day Waves kiss the shore In a gentle wave Mountains touch the sky Lush green fields abound God's beauty here Every sight astounds Oh, the Philippines Land of wonder and dreams Nature's canvas so clear In this place I hold dear Crystal waters gleam Corals under the sea Every inch of this land Feels like a symphony Echoes of the past In the ancient tree Sunrise here, bring me to my knees All those touch the sky, lush green fields abound God's beauty here, every sight of sounds Oh, the Philippines, land of wonder and dreams Nature's canvas so clear In this place I hold dear Oh, the Philippines Land of wonder and dreams Nature's canvas so clear In this place I hold dear Okay Hi, welcome to our YouTube channel Philippine and the Foreigner 